The first thing I want to tell you is that we should not wait for these types of people to ask from us. We are the ones who want to go to heaven. Therefore, we should pursue them. We do not need to search. They are available. If you know that the people from these categories of people, that is, the sick, the imprisoned, the naked, etc., are the ones who will send you to heaven, you will search for them. Why do you spend a day without helping one of those? They are many. So, the first concept here is that we must search for the needy. But as long as we live on separate islands, opening our fridges and watching television, we are wasting opportunities to reach heaven. You are selfish that you rest while someone suffers at the same moment, and you can ease his burden with minimal efforts. For example, we have a lot of food and it may go rotten while there are hungry people. We have extra blankets while there are some without blankets and they're out there freezing. We have expired medications while someone is dying because he could not find it. There is someone bored and has no one to ask about him while you have extra time. Go and ease his boredom. If someone understands that these kinds of people are his way to heaven, he will not be remiss in service. Many of us, when we do an act of mercy, they do it carelessly. For example, we'll throw someone five pounds or five dollars just to ease our conscience. We do not understand that service to these groups of people is our visa to heaven. You are supposed to serve these people in a perfect way. When you visit someone, do it full-heartedly. Find out what his real needs are. If you find someone hungry, do not just give him a small amount of food. When Jesus found hungry people, he fed them till they had excess food. This should be our way to think about the poor. It is not appropriate to give them small things. This will make the door of heaven hard to open. 2 Corinthians 9, 6. He who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. There is also the meaning of taking the initiative, being proactive. Do not wait for someone to ask you. Do not wait till someone tells you, why don't you ask about me? Take the initiative. Many people get embarrassed to ask, and some people do not ask for money. They ask for attention. If you wait, you will lose three quarters of the act. But when you take initiative and search for the poor and the sick, this initiative puts you on the path to heaven. This service is the most important work in life. It is the most serious action. It is what determines your fate. St. Clement and St. John Chrysostom had an expression, Jesus the poor, meaning, can you see Jesus in those people? The hardest one of them is the prisoner. When I go to prison to visit the prisoners, not all the prisoners are well behaved, but the verse is still present in my mind as long as I am in, pr in the prison. Jesus said, I was in prison. How come, Lord? They are criminals. But he doesn't care why they came to prison. He looks at their status and that they are in prison with all its cruelty. Do not look at the reason why he is in prison. Look at the cruelty of his situation. You do not look at a patient with blame because he was neglectful of his health. You do not here judge him. Now he is sick and in pain. Look at Jesus who was in pain. Look at Jesus who was poor. By the way, Jesus was indeed poor. He chose to be poor. He couldn't get sick, but he was imprisoned. He experienced hunger and thirst. He was a stranger. He was traveling to preach all the time with no place to rest his head. He sometimes had to sleep in the mountain or the boat. He experienced hunger, thirst, poverty, and prison. Who needs whom? Many of us, when we serve others, think that those people are the ones who need us. We are the ones who have money, but if our thinking is sound, we will understand that we are the ones who need them. They will stand in front of God telling him, This is the one who served me. And those people who are very close to him, he called them my brethren. They become like mediators. I hope that your mediators are the poor or the sick. It is like what Jesus said in the parable of the unjust steward. Make friends for yourselves by unrighteous mammon, that when you fail, they may receive you into an everlasting home. That's Luke 16, 9. Make friends from these groups of people. How many pe poor people do you have on your list? How many sick people do you have on your phone? 
These are the most important people on your list. Here, a philosophical question may arise. Why did God leave these poor groups in the world? Isn't God good? Why does he abandon them? Simply, they are the keys for us to go to heaven. But isn't that injustice for them? No. Their key is thanksgiving. Their role is to give thanks to God. It is like the story of Lazarus and the rich man. Lazarus did not do many good deeds, but his patience and thanksgiving made him rich. And in Luke 21, 19, it says, By your patience, possess your souls. But we need to do more. It is a wise equation by God. He left some pain in the world, so the ones who suffer can reach heaven easily if they have patience, and the others reach heaven by serving them. God gave you these people for you to reach heaven. If you think of this, you will reconsider all your decisions. You will find that you are wasting your time with people who will not benefit you on the last day. How can we see Jesus in these people? It needs prayer. And it needs a lot of recollection of the verses until you remember them all the time. Pray to God when you go to visit them. God, help me serve these people. These people have God in them. You are going to visit God himself. Pray so you can see. When you pray before your service, this feeling will be implanted in you. Enrich yourself with this meaning. If you do not do this, you will treat them as the others do. You will see them as just poor people. By the way, the Bible has never named them the poor. Paul called this service the fellowship of the ministering to the saints. That's in 2 Corinthians 8, 4. And Jesus named them my brethren. This also includes the sick because they may have money, but they are in pain.